Alright guys, so finally we get to the easy part. Now that we're done typing all the hard code, the background functionality to pretty much make our app work with the SQL database, what we can do is just say, okay, this is the button to add a product, this is the button to delete a product. We essentially just need to hook up our interface with the code, simple enough, and we do that through main activity. So all of my imports that we're gonna need are right there. So you can just copy all of those. Now let's just go ahead and get a reference to everything on our interface, all of those widgets. So edit, text, we call that Bucky's input. Text view, we call that Bucky's text. That's where we're gonna be printing everything out. And remember, my DB handler, we'll just call this DB handler. All right, so now let's go ahead and on create and do the housekeeping stuff. So Bucky's input, set this equal to edit text, find view by id, r.id dot Bucky's input, and the same thing with Bucky's text equals text view, find view by id, r.id dot Bucky's text. Now after this, we need to set our DB handler object, and of course that's equal to new. What was that? My DB handler. Now remember, whenever we create a new database handler, it takes where's a constructor four parameters: the context, which is just going to be the keyword this from the other class, and we can just use null for the name of the database because we already set it equal to the constant right here. We can pass null in for factory and it'll do all of that behind the scenes. And for the last one we need to pass an int so we can just pass in one but it'll actually get the value from right here. So again that's this for the context null, null, one. Essentially we're just letting this class take care of all the hard stuff and we already talked about that before. Now, we're going to have three methods in here. One method is going to be for this add button. Remember we said on click, call the add button clicked. Another method is going to be for the delete button, delete button clicked. And the last method is just going to be for printing this out. It's going to be real simple, like three lines of code. So whenever we do that, we'll just call a method called print database. It won't even take any parameters at all and it's giving us an error because we need to implement that method right there. So this is just going to be public void and it's not going to take any parameters. The only thing that it's going to do is it's going to set the text of this to whatever we retrieve when we call database to string. Simple enough. So the first thing we need is a string and we might as well just reference it through db string and set, set it equal to the database handler dot and remember that method was called database to string so this is what we coded in the last tutorial and we're just taking whatever string we retrieved which pretty much is the product name of every single row and we're going to store it in that variable and now we just take that bucky's text which is our text widget and set the text not set enabled set the text equal to db string and after this what I want to do is I want to take Bucky's input and I also want to set the text equal to blank right there and the reason I want to do this is because well I'll explain this um, in just a second essentially we are gonna print the database whatever is in our file after we add a new item or after we delete an item. So whenever we type watermelon and add it, then what's going to happen is it's going to print out watermelon down here, but then just to make it a little bit easier on the user, we're, we automatically are going to erase the text that was in here. So that way they didn't add watermelon and the word watermelon still chilling up there. So this just makes it a little bit easier on the user if you refresh their input for them so they don't have to delete it manually. So now database 
All right, so now we have to implement that add button clicked. So public void add button clicked. And that's also why we didn't need a reference to those buttons up here because whenever we add the on click method, it pretty much takes care of all the hard work for us, which is really awesome. All right, so product. And set this equal to new products. Bucky's input dot get text dot to string. And let me type all this and then I'll explain what's going on. So DB handler add product product and print the database. All right. So whenever they click the add button, what we want to do is we want to say, okay, they're going to have type something in here like. I don't know what's something that you can have in your store tennis shoes so we're gonna take tennis shoes add it to the database so we're gonna save it to a file and then we're gonna display tennis shoes down here now if you look in our code whenever we add a new product to the database we don't just add the string we actually create a new product object and every time we create a product object it sets the product property to whatever we passed in like tennis shoes so remember this is the database handler and whenever it adds a product to the database it only accepts a product object so if you look add product to add a new row to the database it doesn't accept a string it only accepts a product object so whenever we pass in the object it's going to extract the name, the string value, and then it's going to insert that string into the database. So again, this products is just normal objects, normal Java code. This is making everything compatible so it can insert it or extract it from the database. And this is just hooking up the interface with all of our code. And of course, we know what this does. It pretty much makes a string appear on the screen. And the only method that we need is that delete method and that's public void delete button clicked and my all right and also another thing I always forget to do is make sure you pass in your views as your parameters if you don't then it's not going to register that on click method or whatever you set on click as all right so to delete an item pretty simple we take string and I'll just name it something like input text and set this equal to all right so all we're doing here is we're getting whatever text the user jotted down in that little input and then whenever we call DB handler, remember we're gonna delete product. Now delete product, this indeed takes a string. So we don't pass the product here, we actually pass the string value. So the input text, we can just pass the string value right there. And then we're gonna print out the database on the screen. So again, you can set up your database handler a little bit differently, but this should work so let me go ahead and start my emulator all right so hopefully whenever we type something like bacon we can click add and add it to the database and then we can let's add a few more tuna oops not press enter and uh, like meatball and then if you ever want to delete one you can just type in tuna and it will delete tuna or whatever word you type in it will delete it and again I know that um, I can't really demonstrate it but if you if this was installed on a phone or if you're testing this on a device then what you can do is you can turn off your device and then you can turn it back on and all of the information in your database is going to be saved so pretty cool and that is pretty much the basics of how to work with the SQLite database to save data